What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing a clip from episode 363 of the Black Gold Hockey Podcast. For real, Sam Smith and Mark Allred, joined by special guest Kenny Kaminsky, discuss their expectations for Bruins forward Trent Frederick. Coming up next, let's talk about Trent Frederick. Let's talk about him. He's our spotlight player of the week, I feel like we're, we're going to call it, because uh, we've been highlighting one player recently. Um, Trent Frederick comes into the league, and immediately shows that he should be an NHL or full time. Comes in, comes in, and just starts making the ice his own. And actually, last season had the best st- statistical season of his career last year. Um, one more year left in a deal. Needs a contract after this season. I'll start with you, Kenny. What do you think about Trent Frederick? Do you think he's going to get a contract after this season? Yeah, I hope so. Like, I wrote an article about him, and the comments uh, were pretty mixed. Some people want, you know, them to look at other avenues. I think they should re-sign him, but I've I've always respected Trent Frederick. I mean, coming into the league, being so young and already, you know, chucking knuckles just to, you know, stay in the lineup. Like, that's that's got, you know, I have huge props for that. So, but yeah, 40 points last season is is really, really good. And every single year, his stats just keep going up. So, uh, you know, I'm impressed. But this season is definitely going to be the the telltale. Mark, uh, yeah, I, I I'd resign him as well. I think he's a valued asset to this uh, this Boston Bruins team. Uh, he's well liked in the room. He's a hard worker, but I think he's at that point of his career where um, he's going to transition to more of an offensive player. And and I think that with um, a higher trust from Bruce Cassidy this upcoming season. Uh, I think he could get as high as possibly the second line. Yeah, he could play second line right wing. Um, there's an option right there. Uh, he's definitely a third line staple, and he works well with pretty much anybody. And he makes a lot of players that play alongside him uh, better. Um, I think that for term anyway, I mean, I could see him resigning for like a four million dollar, four million times four. Maybe is that does that seem fair? Um, hmm. but I, I, I just, I really, I've always said that I believe in Trent's upside. I know what got him in the league and what everybody really sees what saw in him, you know, when he did like, you know, beat the bag out of that Winnipeg Jets player while this, while his family was in, in the, uh, in the stands, Trent's got a really good offensive side to himself oh, yeah. that I think that is, is still untapped. Um, and I think that he's trying to work more on that game. And I think that Bruce Cat, I mean, uh, Montgomery is trying to work more in that into him because it could just get better, you know? And I think a four year deal would be fair with the cap going up as well. Um, and, you know, he could be one of those core guys moving forward uh, as we, as you know, the next couple of years are going to be ushering in a lot more younger talent and Trent would be a really good, uh, you know, ambassador to some of those younger guys to not only uh, lean on for, you know, the heavier side of the game, but also if you're a player that is like him going through the ranks, you could offer, you know, some, some uh, advice on how to score goals while being a banger against the boards. I'm not so sure I'd commit $4 million a year to Trent Frederick quite yet. He hasn't had a 20 goal season. He's almost there. He's got 18 last year and he had 17 the year before. He hasn't had a 20 goal season in his career yet. He's been on the third line most of his career. If he wins the second line right wing job out of camp, which he has a damn good shot at getting, right? If he, if he wins that role, and he has a 20, 25 goal season, puts up 50, 55 points, and has the best season of his career. Give him that four million. That That's I'm fair. fine with that. I'm fine with that. My concern is you give him the four million dollars, and then he starts to crumble a little bit. That's my one concern because I he's very streaky at times. Frederick could be the most clutch player in the ice at times. And otherwise you don't even, sometimes you don't even notice him. You know what I mean? So that, that's why one concern with Trent Frederick is either he's really good or he's invisible or he's invincible. And I don't really want, I want there to be a medium, you know, either he's, I want him to be really good all the time. 
So if he's going to be in your top six, which I'm not against, he has to earn that. And I think with Trent Frederick, it he's sometimes just hit or miss on the ice. So it's kind of like, what kind of game are you going to get from him? If that makes any sense. He's a great hockey player. I just hope that he proves it this season. If he has the best season of his career this year, then absolutely give him that $4 million. I just need to, I just need him to take his game to the next level. Yeah. Just that much, just that much. And, um, Make sure Matt Potra doesn't get hurt. Make sure he stays healthy. Speaking of which, we're going to talk about him in a minute, in, in a little bit. Potra, man, he's looking good in camp. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect comment. He needs consistency. Yes, he does. He needs to be a little more consistent. We talked about that with Jake DeBrusque. Now, I'm not saying Frederick and DeBrusque are the same player. But remember, we remember constantly we would say, oh, DeBrusque is kind of inconsistent on the score sheet. Same with Trent Frederick. You see what I'm saying? Frederick, it, I want him to earn that $4 million, but he's got to earn it. So yep. one more and good it, season out of him, then absolutely give him that $4 million. And, and another thing, too, is, is you know, the trade protection is probably going to be a big a big thing in this discussion in these uh, upcoming deals. You know, if they do offer him a four-year deal, you, you know, you, you want to make it so if he does have, you know, a downward spiral in, in those years, you can move him. I, I think that, you know, anytime I think of Trent Frederick and possibly getting something for, for him, I think of St. Louis, you know, I think St. Louis would be a great, a great place for him because it is home and so on. And, and you know, the Bruins could look at who they have and, and see if they could uh, make a deal, but uh, I would like to keep him around. And I just hope that his upside just keeps going up because, um, regardless of what a lot of people say, I think he's still a value uh, to this team, regardless if he's, you know, getting 200 penalty minutes a, a year. I think that that up, offensive upside is just so untapped. And I think that we're going to see it this year because, you know, there's a lot of evaluators that are going to be around to watch him. And, and if he doesn't prove it, then, you know, we got to, you know, see what we go. Um, I've seen, Players move for draft picks and so on, and that could be a, a, an option, but I don't know. I kind of see him being around for a little while longer. The thing about Trent Frederick is, you talk about penalty minutes. Uh, four seasons that he's been consistently on the team, right? From 2020, the 2021 COVID year to now. 65 minutes, penalty minutes. 57 minutes the next two years and 69 last year. He had the most penalty minutes of his career last year. Um, and he didn't have a ton of fights either. So he also needs to stay out of the box a little bit, you know? Um, I'm not saying have, I'm not saying have like 10 penalty minutes. That's, that's a little absurd. I mean, I, that's unreasonable. But lower that number. He had 69 penalty minutes last year. That's not great for any means who is slamming their door any i'm sorry i'm in a college dorm people are slamming their doors constantly i apologize um 69 penalty minutes is not great um if we can get that number under 60 that's better um but it's penalty minutes is not gonna be you know a big break make or break thing for me i just want him to bring that down a little bit um, especially in a contract year, he's got to earn his pay. And I think, I think he has the work ethic. He has that offensive upside. He has value. Clearly he does clearly. I mean, look at his track record. I mean, he has value there. He has a, his, the past three seasons, he's at a plus minus, a, uh, he, he's at a plus the past three years, plus 10, plus 28, plus nine. Pretty decent. Not too bad. I'd, I'd want to keep a guy like that around. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 364 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast for host Sam Smith and Mark Allred. We'll preview the 2024-2025 regular season. See you then.